I'm Suzanne Staggs from Princeton University, where I'm a faculty member in the physics department. So I'm very focused on methods of observing the cosmic microwave background, or CMB, residual radiation left over from the Big Bang. And in particular, I am involved on the experimental side, and especially in building the detectors that go in the big cameras, that go on the telescopes that we put in the high altitude sites in Chile. Study of the cosmic microwave background takes place in kind of three different areas. So one of the areas is in space or in high altitude balloons. One of the areas is in the South Pole, and then another area is in this amazing high altitude site in Chile. And that is because we're all incredibly interested in having as little contamination as possible uh, from the atmosphere and in particular from the water in the atmosphere. So you go to a high altitude, there's less atmosphere. And if you go to a desert, a high dry site, there's less water and less atmosphere. One of the remarkable things about Simon's Observatory is that it is a very large collaboration. So I have never worked in such a large group and I don't think any of my colleagues have either. And so we're bringing together teams with a, a, a variety of expertise, but uh, tied together by this um, common site. Simon's Observatory has the, the structure where it has four different telescopes. And three of the telescopes are small aperture, which means that they're more optimized for looking at larger patches of the sky at once, but not with fine resolution. There's also a large telescope, a six meter telescope. The way the Simons Observatory Large Aperture Telescope works is it has two gigantic mirrors because it can then be designed to have an enormous focal plane, which means a, a large area where you can focus the signals from the sky. And the benefit of that is that it means that you can make maps of the sky that are very good at representing the very small scale features, which is what the large telescope gives you, but they're still correct. They're not contaminated at the large scales because we have this information from, from the smaller aperture telescopes. Two things that I'm very, very interested in seeing. One is there's this possible controversy right now that has to do with Hubble's constant, which is the thing that measures how rapidly the universe is expanding locally by telling us how rapidly galaxies that are at various distances are receding from us. But you can also measure it by looking at aspects of the early universe and then thinking you understand the dynamics that take us from the early universe to now. If we have the right model of cosmology, those two things would agree. And right now, there's tension between the two types of measurements, and those methods seeming to not agree is really exciting to a scientist in general, I think, because it does imply there's room for more understanding. And then another thing, bringing in machine learning to help with aspects of the kind of big data problem that Simon's Observatory has, it has tons of data. And one of the things is, for example, using ideas of machine learning to be able to make realistic simulations of the general universe, life, because it which does imply there's room for expensive. more understanding. But could you use tricks with machine learning so that if you started with only one or five really good simulations, you could end up with hundreds that were good random realizations of those first ones, which would be um, very satisfying. 